And then today we're in sunny Brazil in a place called, I think it's pronounced Altar de Chao, Altar de Chao, something like that. I think it means like Altar of the Church, according to all the little symbols that are around here. Well, we got the beach in the background here. The Amazon River is like just over there. You can see it from here. Uh, it's a nice, quiet little bay in a pretty small little town. And I'm staying in a little campground. Well, it's not really a campground. It's like a guy's place that my tent's set up in uh, called Jill. And I can't pronounce his last name, so I'm going to put it in the notes. Squirry or Squarry or something like that. Anyway, I never heard of this guy until I got here. I just sort of stumbled across him. And apparently he's like a pretty big deal in the Amazon guiding world. And he's a pretty interesting cat at that. He does Amazon River cruises or tours for uh, cruise ships and then like individual parties where he takes them back into the jungle. And just to hang out with the guy is a bit of a trip all its own. He's pretty, mm, he's pretty out there. He's a pretty cool dude. So I plan to come for one night and I've been here for seven now. And while I was here, I've been thinking about the last two years or so I've been traveling with all my cooking equipment that I used to, uh, used to stack on my motorbike and then cook with all the time. So it'll be a good day to do a review on some of the most essential things that I use all the time and uh, why it might be important to pack them with you. So let's get started. First of all, the stove. Let's talk about the stove. So personally, I chose this. Uh, it's called a Firefly stove, this little puppy right here. And uh, it hooks up to a one liter gas bottle. And you can essentially burn, I'm sure you can burn anything in this. You can burn diesel, uh, gasoline, white kerosene, that kind of thing. I personally just use gasoline, that's all I've ever put in it, that way I have a backup fuel supply in case I ever run out of fuel, but I've, uh, I've only ever put gas in this, and the only time I've had problems with it, I think it was actually in Peru, when the gas started to get kind of sticky in here and clogged up, so I'm going to say that the quality of the fuel might play a small role, but other than that, it's around totally fine. And then this is the stove itself, it's pretty simple, it just works on a compression system like this, you pump it up maybe, I don't know, 15, 20, 30 times and then turn it on and then it has two controls where you can control uh, the amount of gas flow here and the amount of gas flow here too which is great there's a cheaper one they sell too that you can get that doesn't have this adjustment on it but i like it because then you can sort of simmer things and slow cook things if you want to maybe you're like cooking a fish you want to cook the snot out of it or you're like simmering a nice soup or something like that uh then it's pretty easy to do and it folds up really small too so all these things fold up and fold up and fold up like this I might as well just take it right off so you can see it. Anyway, it comes off like this. And that just pops out of the end. And it folds up, folds up, this folds up, and then it all sticks inside a little bag. Uh, yeah, it's pretty user friendly actually. I've used it just about everywhere and a couple times, although probably highly dangerous at uh, some pretty hefty altitudes, like 16,000 feet or so up in, the, up in the Andes. I did stick it in the outside of my tent, sort of in the canopy to get a little heat in there before I went to sleep. I shut it off before I went to sleep, but I kept it going uh, for a good hour or so while I was in there with a vent on the other side. So it would let some warm air in there because it was freaking cold. There's snow on the tent. And then anyway, this on the outside fits around it so that it uh, keeps the heat inside. Anyway, this thing I've used, like I cook a lot, so that's why I kind of felt justified in doing this video. Uh, I probably use this thing mm, for sure once a day, sometimes twice a day, sometimes more than that. So I'd say overall, it served me pretty good in terms of its use and easeability. Not too bad at all. I also did it one time on this trip, break this little gray piece right here. I don't know how, but anyway, it broke. And it comes with a four year warranty, so I sent it back to them and they didn't ask any questions, they just sent me a whole new piece actually, so this is all brand new now. Uh, yeah, so two days, pretty steady twice a day and no problem at all. Next up is going to be what you cook with. I know there's little fold down pots and stuff you can get, but because I like to cook so much, I really wanted a uh, Teflon coated one. So I started off with a different size pot of this. It was actually about twice the size. So it's a little bit heavier than you might need sort of deal, but um, I went twice the size of this and the glass lid was twice the size too, but it's pretty durable. So I really like it. So yeah, I ended up trading this in. I was back in North America a few months ago. So I traded this in for a smaller one. I think this is a quart and a quarter, something like that. I'll have to look that up. And it works out really good. It only took me a year to think of this, but I ended up cutting the handle off. So it comes with a quite a long handle like this, and I never thought of it for about a year. But once I got this one, I cut the handle off and then sanded the end down a little bit so it fits a little bit better, and I can put all my stuff in there. So right now I just put my towel in there and keep it kind of the way. But um, for me, it works out great. I cooked soup in this, I cooked fish in this, I cooked steak in this. I uh, made bread in this, I let it rise and then bake off the bread, I made little pizzas, uh, what else I make, make pancakes put a bit in here, I make omelets, or omelets, sorry, well I made omelets too, but I make um, like a porridge or oatmeal almost every morning, so uh, that's great, I'd recommend for sure, so, you know, so a pot if you're doing a lot of cooking, those little tin crappy ones that are quite small, look good for like carrying around, but 
I don't want to clean it and after you probably burnt something in there twice you probably don't want to either so for this it's great I just take a like a cloth or a wet nap or something like that like those uh, baby wipes I just wipe it out afterwards or a little bit of soap and water and it's easy no nope, no scratches no problems no nothing so I highly recommend this if you're gonna do some serious cooking along the way next up some knives. So for the first year and a half or so I've been using this. I liked everything about it except for I kept putting it in a sheath and uh, I would keep cutting through the sheath and I couldn't really carry it anywhere. If I went fishing and stuff I couldn't really carry it anywhere. So in terms of like using it and using it to like chop vegetables and whatnot it works out really really good but for keeping it around it's not so great. So I'm just buying uh, like a, one of these knives that fold down. It's really good. It's really sharp. It was cheap. I think it was like $12 or something like that. It works out good. The only problem I kind of find is because it gets fat at the top here. Um, when you're cutting, say, carrots or potatoes, and they only cut halfway and then they split at the end because it's so wide compared to this, which is quite a bit thinner. Anyway, but in terms of using this and carrying around, I definitely have a preference for this. So I'm probably going to give this away. That being said, for cutting, I brought this Tupperware with me. I love it. I use it all the time. Um, so for the cutting part of it, this little Tupperware folds up like this. I've been just flipping the lid upside down because it's such a, like, a hard plastic. As you can see, it's got cut marks all over it. And uh, I use this to cut all the, whether you want like tomatoes or if you're gonna cut up some whatever vegetables. Or even with this, it works out great. It's been used quite a bit and it's never wrecked, never cracked, never broke, never nothing. It also has on the inside, let's see if I can get this out or not. Mm. It has this little sort of rubber seal that keeps the, obviously the liquids in it out for like an O-ring. Anyway, it's great because it comes out, so I can take it out, and at some point it's going to mold for sure, which is how I first discovered it comes out. You can take it out, you can clean it, it's really it's really good, really user friendly. I also got this, I had two of these until about a week ago, I don't know how I managed to lose one, but I had two, so let's just assume there's two here. It's really handy because if you want this, you can use it for mixing stuff, or making stuff up, whatever, but if you want to say, have like a little portion thing for, if you have like a breakfast snack, or maybe like a snack for later, I eat a lot, so I try to prepare that a few meals for the day. And you can put one in here and one in the other small one, or just all in the big one here. And then I'll usually, um, once I get it set up, I'll just put this back together. I'll put this and I'll put it in the tank bag on the bike. And then at lunchtime, whenever I want a snack, I can just I'll open it up and have a little snack there. Plus it's great for keeping out all the little ants that appear and all the little bugs and anything else that's around. You can just sort of keep it locked up and no problems at all. Next up. Tools, so this I just use because I have the stainless or the stainless steel, the Teflon coated pot here, so the handle's really nice. Just a flat wood, it's easy, same thing, it cleans up really nice. Uh, if you break it or lose it or it gets gross, you can just buy another one. I think I bought this one in Bolivia for, I don't know, maybe, uh, I don't know, like a dollar or something, it's pretty handy. Uh, these are both pretty good, so you get some cutlery options. I kind of prefer this spoon actually, and I use a fork a bit, but usually I just use a spoon for almost everything, so it's not really a big deal. And it works out great. Uh, stainless steel, it's not that crappy sort of uh, Chinese product stainless steel. This is going to turn to rust after a while, it's the real deal, and uh, it's easy to clean. Uh, these puppies here are pretty good. Uh, I did have another set before too, and the plastic eventually broke just from like traveling around so much. These are new, so we'll see how they hold up. You don't really need the knife, uh, it came as a set, you can probably order the knife, I just use this for everything if you're trying to worry about less stuff rather than more, it's great. Some other tools that I haven't quite found the value in yet, but I do have them. Uh, my girlfriend finds it necessary to buy me little trinkets and little things that she thinks helpful on the way, and uh, so this would be great I suppose. I haven't actually used it yet, although I've had it for a couple months. It's a nice little bowl, it could probably be used kind of like the tubware because it seals up really nice. So it's great, kind of like that. And it has little measurement increments on the inside, which I'm sure you can't see, but 500 mils, 400 mils, 200 mils. And I'm assuming this side's two cups, one cup, and half a cup. And then when you're done, it just folds up nicely and goes like so. Personally, I've just been using the Tupperware container as like a mixing bowl when I need it, so it's not really a big deal. But this is a little cup too. So you got me this cup, it's really cute. Uh, I use it once, like just for a glass of water to say I use it. Uh, it's really great, it's super handy. I don't know if you like fancy little little crafty ideas. That's great because it folds up really small. I do, however, I'll oh, left it over here one second. I do, however, have this that I've been rolling around for a while in terms of my cup. So this puppy here is stainless steel. Screw on cap. Straw in the middle. 
and this little thing on the top. So I got this because I have a little water bottle mount in the front of my motorcycle, the same as you'd have on your pedal bike. Well, it's actually off the pedal bike ones. I just tied it onto my bike. It's good because I can just slide this under my helmet while I'm driving. I can drink. I don't drink a lot. I don't put coffee or anything in it because I don't want to change, like, you know, you get that flavor instead of using like, different drinks. I only ever put water in this, but it works out great. Uh, as you can see, it's fallen on the ground many times. It's been rolled around. I dropped it a lot. Um, but it's pretty durable. So in terms of like a container to drink out of for use, you can use this. I've also boiled tea when I was in uh, Cusco. It was up really high. You get headaches and stuff from the altitude sickness, so they give you cocoa leaves to like the same stuff they make cocaine out of. So sort of uh, minimize the headache and help you help you deal with the altitude. And so this thing I could just set right above the stove right here and I can boil the water right in here and then have my cocoa tea ready and uh, caca cocoa? Cocoa leaves, yeah. Uh, ready, then I put it on the bike and then I have like this sort of warm tea to drink while I was riding. And it wouldn't alter the flavor of the tin at all, so it was great. And it would help with the altitude sickness. So it was, it was perfect, it was great for that. You can cook stuff in it too. You could probably heat water in there and make a soup if you really had to. Next on the list, uh, things you'd need to cook with, actually. So, so like I said before, I cook a lot. I used to own some restaurants. Uh, I cook my whole life. I own some catering companies. Uh, I really like to cook. I cook a lot. So for me, it's more important to have like a little variety of things to cook with than it is to say, just maybe throw in some noodles in a container, heat them up. So I'm rolling around with some spices too. So to make soup with, these are just those little, mm, what are they, like little flavor pouches like this. Come on. Just like this. So this is like a block of chicken salt, essentially is what it is. It's really, really salty chicken flavor. This one's beef. So these are great. I just drop them in a pot when I'm making like a soup. And uh, it just flavors all the vegetables. So that's it. I can do that. Maybe put a little pepper in there and you have like a flavor for your soup. It's really handy. So those are nice to have around. They're really easy to carry. This here is paprika, a little smoked paprika to bring out the flavor in a few things. If you got like a little, put a little on your chicken maybe, or like a little smokiness in your soup, it's pretty handy too. This is actually cinnamon that I bought too. It's great for the mornings. Uh, I just put it in my oatmeal or whatnot, brings a little flavors to the thing. And I got some pepper too. So I just put some pepper, you know, salt, pepper, shabam. So I used to have something a little bit funner. So a friend of mine, Gilberto, actually made me this. So it's sort of a lemon, garlic, and herb mix with salt in it. So it's good to pick up a few. Oh, there's little spicy peppers in there too. So it's good if you have a little variety of stuff too to cook with because using the same thing all the time gets a little tiring after a while. So I sprinkle this on the eggs or maybe in the soup too or across the steak. It's good. It's really handy. And then I also have this right here. Maybe it's a little overkill, but I got a little bit of everything. This is on sale when I was uh, back in North America. So I got some of the cake, steakhouse and bar chicken spice. I used to have Montreal steak spice before, which I think is actually quite a bit better. But I used it all up and I didn't get another one. I thought I better change it up because this will last like a long time when you're biking by yourself. So it's good. And then another essential thing that you might want to bring, depending on where you're from in the world and whatever it is, it's most important to you to sort of bring back taste of home, is to pack a little something extra. So in this case, we happen to also have a nice heavy glass bottle of pure Canadian maple syrup. Being as I'm Canadian, this is sort of a big deal. Um, so, you know, once in a while it's nice to have a little maple syrup in the bag. A great little add-on, depending on where you're from, maybe, I don't, I don't even know, I couldn't even speculate what the, like, the flavor is from your place, whether you're, it's curries or whether it's, um, I don't know, spicy peppers or whatever you're into, I have no idea, but it's good to sort of bring back some flavors you have from home. Sometimes it's difficult to find things on the road that are actually mm, something that you can kind of see, or, uh, um, uh, recognize as a flavor that you enjoy or reminds you of home, so it's good to mix up a little bit. So all in all, these are some camping essentials that you can put in your adventure motorcycle when you go on the road, no matter if you go for a few days or a few months or a few years, but it's good to have the, I'd say the most practical, smallest space taking up, except for this pot maybe, um, best quality stuff you can take with you because you don't want to mess around with like cheap crappy goods when you're on the road because it's a little harder to deal with. That's all for today. I'll give you a quick shot of the surroundings so you can see where we're at. <clears throat> That's a beautiful trees, landscape. You should be able to see what looks like the ocean back there, but it's actually just a lake past the hammock and a nice little beach. There's usually iguanas running around this place, but they'll probably be out later this afternoon. There's a cashew tree back on the top there. So they come down, they eat these little cashew fruits that are everywhere. As soon as you see like three or four, uh, let's see how close we can get. That's a smushed cashew on the ground there. But anyway, the iguanas will come out later and they'll eat it up. 
And then that's my bike sort of hidden in the background here. So you can see that uh, we're authentically on the coastline here in Brazil. Well, the coastline of the river anyway. And then that's my camp back there. There's a tent, there's where we're set up, and this is what it's like living the high life on the motorcycle. Thanks for watching. If you have anything you want to know, feel free to send me an email. Click subscribe, click like, share with your friends. Let's see if we can make this into a bit of a big deal. And if you have anything you want to add, let me know too. There's lots of stuff. I'll probably do a whole section on just like camping gear. But in terms of cooking, those are the essentials for sure. The essentials I use all the time. And uh, I put them definitely at the top of my list of things to bring with me. Thanks. Have a great day.